revised, but it's very significantly revised. So um, TFT prices finally came back down to earth after uh, you know many chip and uh, TFT shortages. And um, so we've actually updated our TFT supplier. And while we were doing that, I was like, well, you know, if I'm going to update the TFTs, why not update the designs as well? And so if you look on the back of this 2.2 inch TFT breakout, it now has an iSpy connector. Also has the lovely new Penguin font um, that you have been showing off on Desk of Lady Ada, where um, the font is is rendered nicely using this Python script that uh, Paint Your Dragon wrote. But we now have an iSpy connector. It's otherwise the same shape, same pinout. Everything else is in the same location. Um, but I want to show on uh, the overhead. Actually, we can just uh, skip ahead. Yeah. You know, show some we images of it. Going yeah. On. I yep. got it going on. So on the overhead, um, the iSpy connector is sort of like, people are like, oh, can you have like, you know, the stem QT that people really love, right? You plug in i squared C sensors with a cable and it's just plug and play. You know, could you do that for displays? Um, so this cable, you know, you can't just use two or three pins. You actually need like, you know, 12 pins to do SPI, especially if you want the SD card and if there's a touch screen. Um, so this is a uh, 18 pin cable and it's a flex cable and there's a connector on here and it's a, a pretty easy to um, remove. It's a flip top connector. So I really like that style because uh, they're a lot less likely to break. You slot the uh, connector in, which of course is hard to do on the overhead. So hold on. And uh, you can control all these GPIO, the power reset, SD card, backlight, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, comes through here and then, for example, we have this little breakout board um, that labels all of the uh, GPIO for you for easy wiring. And then, you know, this cable can be significantly longer than breadboard wires, but also makes it a lot easier to yeah. connect and disconnect and test. So um, here I'm just running like, you know, the, the standard graphics test. Um, but what's nice is it's no longer tied to the breadboard. I can disconnect yeah, you won't, like accidentally hit one wire and then spend a bunch of time trying to figure out which wire it was. Yeah, and we're going to have like a, uh, you know, a feather and a stem QT breakout for this connector that like plugs in directly. But I do like showing it on a breadboard to say like, hey, what's nice is everything's labeled. Um, and I'm using the 100 millimeter cable, but of course these cables come in significant lengths uh, of availability. Okay, next up. Okay, next up, we have two more sizes of the SPI flash. We again have the QSPI flash version that is just like, you know, eight pins of all the, the QSPI connectors. But if you're using something with five volt logic, like in Arduino Uno, or, you know, for some reason you just want to have it, you know, maybe data protected, uh, there's a level shifter on there and an LDO. Also good if you are, uh, you know, there's some chips that used to, SPI flash chips that used to come with five volt compatibility if you need to wire this up to something that needs that 5 volt compatibility. Um, this is a, a you know, Winbond 25Q64 series, which is again, one of the most popular SPI flash chips available. Um, and we just wire it up for SPI usage. So the hold and WP, the extra two pins are not used, they're uh, set high. And you just get the SPI pins with chip select. Um, for Arduino, we have a um, SPI flash library that you can use you can format it as fat or little fs or use it as a flat file so this is 64 kilobits yeah. which is eight kilobytes and this is the 128 mm -hmm. yeah there's two the 128 kilobits which is 16 kilobytes they're labeled in kilobits not kilobytes um you can see it matches the printing on the chip that's why we say that so uh you know six, 16 kilobytes you know that's not so bad you can use it with a you know a variety of microcontrollers to store, um, you know, uh, audio clips or files, um, and then reference them later. Uh, you know, if you're using a lot of storage, I always recommend an SD card, but these are mechanically stabler. And of course they're less expensive, you know, and a lot simpler for some basic uses. Um, you know, you still, they're still flash. You have to erase them uh, before you write to the pages. But uh, again, our library takes care of that for you. All right, and the start of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our staff are team, all the folks who work with Adafruit, the community, our customers, is the NeoPixel driver BFF. Uh, so it's actually, I designed this after Erin did that project with um, the, she was, she was doing the uh, jellyfishes and she's like, well, I wanted to have a cutie pie and connect a NeoPixel. And I was like, oh, you know, there should be a little board that kind of does all the, the tough work of that for you. So. Um, looking on the, the back here, 
um, in the middle is uh, it, that, that little chip in the middle is a um, 74HCT125 1G, a single gate level shifter that will take the three volt logic level and shift it up to five volts, which I thought was a nice little add on. And it uses the USB five volts to do that. Um, it's by default using pin A3 and there's jumpers you can cut inside of the jumpers so you can use like MOSI or RX or TX. So there's no like, you know, dedicated NeoPixel pin. Instructions are on the back. You solder it back to back. Uh, you can use your sockets or of course you can solder it directly if you like. I, I perhaps like sockets. And then the connector that's on most NeoPixels is not, um, it's a JST SH, does not come in a surface mount version. So we put in a JST PH connector. Um, and I'll, I'll show it and then I'll show you how you would connect to a NeoPixel strip that's not. Uh, so hold on, let me find my, wait, here's my demo. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so let's go to the overhead. Um, so here I've got an RP2040 QDPI, which is a great NeoPixel driver. It has PIO support. Um, and then you can see on the back here, I've just, we've soldered a little socketed uh, version so I can remove it, but you don't have to, you can solder it directly if you want. And um, for short strips, uh, you can power it directly from the, um, this cable. Like this is a, uh, this is, we, we stock these NeoPixel strips that have the JSTPH on them. You get five volts from USB, ground from USB, and that level shifted data. So here's the NeoPixel demo. A lot of NeoPixel strips, like, you know, they don't, they either come with raw wires or they come with, um, JSTSH, and again, there's no adapter, there's no uh, surface mount version of that connector. However, you can use um, JST to socket cables, and then you just plug these in to the wires, you just plug the wires in, uh, and they're, they're color coded. So red is power, green is black is ground, and white is signal. Uh, we also have a version with um, plug mail headers. So, you know, those you plug it in and then now you have a removable plug version. If you're powering a ton of NeoPixels, like more than 30, honestly, I wouldn't power it from the USB port. I would have a separate five volt power supply, in which case you would just connect the ground and signal and then you could cut the red wire off or just you know tie it around here and ignore it. And then you would power the strip uh, separately, uh, but have the signal and ground still come from this board. You know, and we have Wi-Fi versions of the um, Cutie Pie, so if you want to make a WLED project, this would be a, a great plug and play way to do that. Um, it also works with the Shao boards from Seed, so you want to use their Bluetooth board, um, make a Bluetooth NeoPixel project. It's just, you know, it's a very inexpensive little add-on, but it should just make NeoPixel projects a lot easier. Okay, and that is new products. New, 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 new.